views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio, harnessing our connection with the universe to affect change for optimal success and happiness. Are you looking for direction with your relationships, business, purpose, or simply life? Well, you're at the right place. Named one of the country's top psychics, Eve now brings our insights and gifts to this weekly hit calling show. Joined by visionaries, leaders, gifted others, but mostly you. Get ready for a slice of life's journey. Eve's objective guidance, tarot, readings, and the momentum you need to move beyond whatever crossroad you're stuck at. Now here's your amazing host, Eve. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Main Street Metaphysics Radio, harnessing the power of the universe for happier living. My name is Eve, the MBA psychic from Elite Tarot. Happy to be here today doing readings and talking energy. Benny, thank you so much for driving the monster truck and many thanks to one and all for tuning in. The monster truck, I like that. (laughs) Add that to my resume. I'm a monster truck driver now. Yes. Yeah, I love it. I graduated. Yeah, I graduated. I love it. Thanks. Sure. Today I am here doing readings all hour on air for you. I'm going to be doing a three card tarot card reading for callers today with the first card representing the current situation, second card representing something challenging or blocking you, and the third card representing advice. If you're interested in a reading, give us a call at 800 930 2819. That's 800 930 2819. Nine. As I look at tarot as a visual representation of the mind of the unconscious, with your unconscious on your side wanting you to be happy, there is nothing scary that can possibly come up. I do not see myself as a fortune teller as I believe that messes with free will. Rather, I use tarot as a path for you to connect to your own power for optimal joy. If you have a question about your path or feeling stuck in your career, disconnected from your life's purpose, at a crossroads, trying unsuccessfully to bring joyful love into your life, we can look at it all through the lens of the reading. As always, please wait at least three weeks between readings if you've had a reading from me already. The reason being that a reading pulls from the universe well, so to speak, and if we go to the well too often, the messages that can come up can be redundant and superfluous. That being said, I love updates, so if you've put some ideas into place based on a reading that I gave you and want to share, please do. If you're tuning in for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Just a little bit about who I am and my approach. I'm an intuitive coach and professional tarot card reader who works with clients around the world in helping them tap into their own power to affect change for optimal success and happiness. This is done through using energy effectively, which can sometimes be even counterintuitive. It's my belief we are all surrounded by energy, and what can happen is that with career, love, or finding your purpose of passion, we sometimes, even with the best of intent, find ourselves blocked with no movement forward. It feels as if we're pushing against the wind, which can be taxing to the body, mind, and spirit. This can lead to frustration, stress, and the feeling of working twice as hard, but only getting half as far. My company, by the way, is Elite Tarot, which you can find at EliteTarot.com, that's E-L-I-T-E-T-A-R-O-T.com, or MainstreamMetaphysicsRadio.com. I do sessions over phone and Skype worldwide, so guidance and insight, no matter where you are, is just a click or call away. I also do tarot card readings at events nationwide for corporate retreats, birthdays, bridal showers, wedding receptions, you name it. In fact, as soon as I sign off today, I'm heading out for a corporate retreat event, which I am very much looking forward to doing readings at. I call myself the MBA psychic, as in addition to having an MBA, I look at a reading as an intuitive jigsaw puzzle, where tools to affect change for optimal success and happiness are presented through the tapestry of the tarot card reading. 
I'm sort of liking my work to that of a metaphysical midwife, so to speak. It's not my baby. I didn't put the baby in there. I don't keep the baby once it's delivered. I don't determine the gender of the baby. My job is there is solely as a support to help guide the person's own birth of insight, clarity, and guidance. One way that I do this is through the development of step-by-step -step recipes of processes people can choose to go through to do anything from releasing stress or trauma, find a career of passion or purpose, embrace inner harmony and joy to manifesting healthy and joyful love, particularly when it means navigating a journey that's unfamiliar. Today I'll be using the Rider Waite Tarot Card Deck, so feel free to follow along if you have a deck or you can look at the cards online. As each reading is done with a fresh perspective, I really do not look at stock interpretations of a card. I don't know who wrote them. Plus, the interpretations vary from source to source, so I am most interested in the pictures of the cards when I do any reading. I have a candle lit, which is my signal to open a session, and I'll be pulling cards on the caller's behalf using my left hand, as that is my non-dominant hand. The non-dominant hand is the one that accesses the unconscious. And I always like to start with a small disclaimer that I am not a doctor, lawyer, therapist, or realtor. And a reading should never be taken as a substitute for seeking guidance from a licensed professional. So I think what we'll do, I'll either go on. Benny, do we have any calls? We do, actually. We just had Rochelle uh, dialing us in from San Francisco. So we'll bring on Rochelle. Hello, Rochelle. Welcome awesome. to the show. Yeah. Hello, Welcome, Rochelle. Hi. Welcome to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio, Rochelle. How are you? I'm good. 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 Excellent. Is there anything you have a particular question about? Yeah, I'm a, having a shift in career and um, in my job, and it's kind of seeming to get off to a slow start. So I just kind of have some questions around that. Yeah, totally. Just, well, let's... Let's see what the cards say about that. I've just been shuffling while you've been talking. And, you know, sometimes the slow start is a blessing in disguise. Sometimes yeah. it's a message. <laughs> sometimes it's like saying, go away, turn around, turn left back. Others say, you know, it's other times it could just mean it's like it's exactly where you need to be. So let's see if we can get some added guidance. And I'm kind of laughing because the, the card that came up is going to be is a little bit of a cosmic sense of humor here card, uh, <laughs> particularly with your question. And the card that came up was the two of swords. Now, in the two of swords, you see a person trying to kind of tune inward. She's sitting at a bench on the water's edge and she's holding up two swords like as if to decide do I do this or do I do that she's blindfolded as she's really trying to tune inward accessing the intuition in order to make that decision which is telling me that the guidance from this card is saying that you're really trying to um, tune inward is like I know one of these might be wrong but I don't know which one I'm not sure what to do and so you know you're honoring the intuition which is great Something challenging or blocking is the Six of Cups. You know, this is an interesting card, which is almost telling me that this slow start is a bit of a blessing in disguise. Because the Six of Cups is really a card about healing, recovering from the past, and really taking the time to give yourself what you need right now. And so that even makes though a it's lot a of sense. <laughs> Excellent. It makes because, a lot of sense, yeah. You, you know, it's almost like if we leave a relationship and then we jump into the next relationship before really coming to some closure and some healing from the last relationship, we're not setting ourselves up for that greatest of optimal success. And so for this card here, it's saying your your inner child is saying, hey, I need I need to release this past and um and i need to just i just need to give myself what i need right now what sort of things did you used to love to do when you were like eight ten years old that would just have you laughing joyful all of those things uh i think just yes just more play more play, play. um and that's kind of one of the things that i'm looking to do is find a career that feels more like play than feels like a job okay that's fine but what kind of play did you do was it swinging? Um, was it on the swing set? Was it slides? Was it yeah, um, 
Yes, I did a lot of that kind of stuff, yes. Swing okay. set slides, um, outdoors, you know, some sports. Super. Give, when was the last time you played on the playground? When was the last time that you ran around playing, doing some sports? Um, sports has been a little while, but um, I have been on playgrounds with nieces and nephews not too long ago. Um, Were so you playing? I do give myself an opportunity. Uh, yes, I was playing with them. Um, I, but yeah, uh, maybe not as much as I could have been, but yeah. I think you kind of hesitated. I think what she's looking for as far as did you actually go on the monkey bars and play in the tire swing and do the swing and do those kind of things, not just for them. Exactly. Because so, yeah, right. okay. <laughs> so often we kind of say, well, it's good enough that I played with my kids. And what's clearly needed in the Six of Cups is that it's time to you need some playing yourself and tap into that inner spirit. Because when you were playing on those monkey bars and everything, you were feeling strong. You were feeling healed. So honor yourself now. And, you know, it's great to look for a career that fills that need. But when you're but right now, when things are slow, take that time to fully play, fully release and fully kind of be a kid again for you. And and you don't have to tell anyone that you're doing it. (laughs) But because the advice card is the knight of pentacles and pentacles talks a lot about career knights do the bidding of the king and in this card if this were in any other position i'd be like oh but this is a good, this is the advice card and so this is saying do the bidding of the king your king is your inner child and your inner child is saying hey i need some healing from the last experience before we dive forward because the knight of pentacles this horse is not moving and so a, and he's just waiting for or like an invitation or waiting for the next orders. Key first part is just to do some playing, just to do some healing. Give yourself permission to take the time from the last experience so that you're not going forward, still holding on to some of that resentment and then unconsciously looking to the career to fill that that joyful need. It's wonderful if you have a career that is joyful. We all want that, but first get that joy first. Does that does that resonate? Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. I've been doing some, um, you know, personal development and exploration of, you know, some past wounds and trying to release that. And now I feel though caught between like I really need to look for the next job and look for the next thing, but it helps in terms of just focusing on finishing that um, personal growth piece. So, and making sure I put um, emphasis and energy into that. And, and you know what, you're doing great. Just remember that adult healing is different from inner child healing. And right now you're needing some inner child healing is what the cards are kind of pointing you to. And inner child, just like if you give a gift, the kid just wants the wrapping paper. So children are easily pleased, but they they require different things. Give yourself time to heal. Give yourself time to play. And please, will you let us know how everything goes? Yes, will do. Thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for calling. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got more readings to do. If you're interested in a reading, give us a call at 800-930-2819. You're listening to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. We'll be right back. Do you ever feel like a plastic What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit glennarice.com. 
Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet, welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Tune in to the hit show, Mouthing Off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. Now you can be a part of one of the most powerful programs to help create a more joyful, loving, abundant, and peaceful world. Every day at 12 noon in any time zone, join millions of other people around the world to spend a few minutes in joy, love, and gratitude. Brought to you by Robert Schoenfeld, host of the Art of Powerful Living Radio. Together, we can raise the vibration of the planet. For more information, visit globalmomentofjoy.com. Awareness is universal. Establishing a living awareness through meditation brings peaceful, healthy, and creative well-being into your everyday life. The practice of living awareness, Spirit Fire's own meditation practice, is built on this belief and is designed for every level of practitioner. Each year, Spirit Fire hosts living awareness meditation retreats that allow you to explore the practice in depth at our retreat center in beautiful western Massachusetts. Introduce yourself to meditation and the practice at the Foundations Retreat. Attend, in silence, a silent meditation retreat focused on mindfulness, presence, and nature. Or be engaged with the meditation sittings themselves at the Deepening Retreat. Start adding to your awareness and attend a meditation retreat designed to cultivate consciousness in your everyday life. For details on attending a Living Awareness Meditation Retreat, visit upcoming events at www.spiritfire.com. Welcome back to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. I'm Eve, the MBA Psychic from Elite Tarot Talking Energy today and doing readings. Today I'm doing a three-card tarot card reading We're for callers with the first card representing the current situation, second card representing something challenging or blocking you, and the third card representing advice. If you're interested in a reading, we have a phone line open, so give us a call at 800-930-2819. Before we get to the next call, I thought I would talk a little bit about uncomfortable energy. It's a little more metaphysical than mainstream, however I approach it from my practical mainstream perspective. A few weeks ago, we had a caller who was very distraught as she was feeling that she was being confronted by spirit in a negative manner, which was impacting her in all different aspects of her life. So I thought I would expand on this topic as so often we're quick to label this uncomfortable yet surprisingly common phenomenon as negative or bad without exploring it further. Sometimes what we think of as negative energy is just our brain absorbing uncomfortable truths with or without the aid of spirit energy. While most of the time, People will reach out for me for issues surrounding career, love, move, stuck, seeing, not seeing the opportunities to embrace joy. The issue of a spirit presence is uncomfortable, that it's uncomfortable for whatever reason is something that I do get from time to time. In fact, I remember one of the very first corporate events I ever did. I was at an event filled with professionals, and I'm expecting to get questions about career, all the topics. A woman sat down, looked around to make sure no, no one, no one from, for coworkers was listening, and she said that she thought she had a ghost in her house. No one was taking her seriously, yet she knew this ghost was trying to say something. 
I did a tarot card reading on it, thinking perhaps this was an anomaly. Yet what I found is that this is experienced by so many people, yet there are a few places where they can go where they won't be immediately judged. So I thought I'd address it from my perspective in terms of energy and what to do if you feel as if you're having that spirit energy around you and immediately want to classify it as negative or just dismiss it. So I'm occasionally asked to go into homes where someone is feeling as if there's some sort of spirit there. They're not sure what it is, but they feel it's negative. As I do everything through the lens of the tarot, I'll pull a card or two in each room and see if there are any messages coming in. Now, this is not a definitive science, and my specialty is not in poltergeists or ghosts. However, we are still dealing with a very similar sphere of reference. I always say that if your foot hurts, you have options, as you can see a podiatrist, an orthopedic surgeon, a Reiki practitioner, an acupuncturist, or your family doctor. All are dealing with your foot, but all have very different philosophies and approaches. You, as the ultimate consumer, need to pick the one that resonates best with you, as you always have free will. All of us have probably had a time when we've had some sort of felt like some sort of message or felt a presence that was proven in some way. Perhaps you were thinking about someone you hadn't thought about in years, and then amazingly that person calls. Things along those lines. Perhaps you saw a shadowy essence in your home or saw something that was just not of your frame of reference. Scientific theory is based on observational evidence. I don't always understand it. I would say I have not yet seen the organizational chart of the universe. Yet with so many observational anecdotes, I realized that the person who saw me years ago about the ghost in her home was not an anomaly. To dismiss it haphazardly would be wrong, yet it's unclear if the energy is a spirit, either positive or negative, or a message of some sort being absorbed, either internally or externally. Regardless, to first dismiss it when this is something that is so common yet rarely talked about is just not helpful. This experience seems to happen more for people who are more intuitive than others, because then you're almost like a sponge picking up energy from messages from others, and it's not even necessarily about you. So it's important to protect yourself and make sure that you are guarding yourself so it's not taxing for mind, body, and spirit. Now, the first step about this is to not immediately jump to the phrase negative energy when confronted with unexplainable spirit energy. Does evil energy exist? I believe it does, which is why, for example, I set a clear boundary around every single reading that I do to ensure that anything that comes up in a reading is for the highest good. Today, we're just talking about energy that is not negative, but we're not sure what it is. Sometimes energy is just energy, which is still going to come off as uncomfortable. It doesn't mean that it's negative. Yet we can easily create self-fulfilling prophecies by labeling it immediately negative. The more that you name something as negative, the more work you're placing on yourself to see it as anything but negative. On an airplane, when there's turbulence, it does not mean anything's necessarily negative, but it does not feel so good. According to Life Science Magazine, turbulence is described as when a mass of air moving at a particular speed meets another mass of air that's moving at a different speed. It's not dangerous, evil, or negative, yet when you're going through it, it can be uncomfortable and, in fact, pretty darn scary at times. There's a Charlie's Angels TV show episode that I remember. It's not the Farrah Fawcett years nor the Cheryl Ladd years, but before the Tanya Roberts years, somewhere in the middle there, when one of the angels goes to this haunted, scary house. Doors are flapping open and shut. Lights are going on and off, and she's getting all freaked out, sure that this is negative energy. Well, it turned out that this energy was the lady of the house who was murdered, and she was trying to get the angel's attention to lead her to evidence that proved that her ex-husband murdered her before he murdered anyone else. Of course, now that's a TV show. It's not real. But the point is that spirit energy can feel the same, whether it's negative or positive. It's still a disruption. I also want to talk a bit about the movie Arrival, 
where Amy Adams communicates with space aliens who've landed on the planet. Now, personally, this is a fine movie. I don't want to say anything bad about it, and probably my gripes with the movie are more the way a doctor might feel while watching a movie about medicine, where medicines might be prescribed wrong, people holding the stethoscope the wrong way, things like that. So here in this movie, space aliens, they've landed on this planet. The government finds Amy Adams to have her communicate with them. Perfect. Now, if the government had come to me because space aliens had arrived on the planet, I'd probably be a little nervous, a bit uncomfortable, a little scared, but I would be like, thank you for contacting me. That's my job. Let me bring my cards. Let's have a conversation. But in the movie, there was so much freaked out emotion that when she was talking to the space aliens that I couldn't help but think, this is your job. It can be uncomfortable, but just do your job. But that's a minor point. I digress. <laughs> in the movie, as the space aliens would send out a message, it would be scary. Yet it was probably just as scary to the space aliens when Amy Adams was reaching out to them. On both ways, the information was received as unsettling because they didn't speak the same language. There was nothing negative about the space aliens, but the feelings people experienced made it feel as if it was a negative energy. It would be so fantastic if you're trying to get a message from your departed Uncle Bob and he just calls you up on the telephone and says, hey, Barbara, I've got a message for you. Or maybe suddenly your pen lifts up in the air and starts writing a letter to you with information. That would be awesome. However, alas, it does not just happen that way. Instead, we're dealing with communication not in a refined form. If you think something is negative, it might just be spirit just trying to get your attention. It might be alternatively that you've walked into turbulent energy that has absolutely nothing to do with you. It could be a manifestation of a dilemma that your brain is attempting to navigate. And of course, it could mean that you're picking up on something negative. It all may feel the same, so it's helpful to figure out exactly what it is. You can get a tarot card reading, which is my personal preference, but I'm biased. You can talk to people who work with ghosts, poltergeist mediums. You can talk with a therapist who will be open to exploring this subject to help you deal with the feelings, all from a place of strength. The list goes on, and there are so many resources available to you, and you as the ultimate consumer need to know what works best for you. We're going to take a quick break. I'll talk a little bit more about the subject. Plus, we've got readings to do. So if you are listening to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Plus, live your purpose equals joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that are meant to make the world brighter. Each show will feature an art visioning journal prompt to help you create your way to soul clarity. If you're ready to get unstuck and create more joy, this show is for you. Tune in every month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit VickiWorldArt.com. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. 
Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit SpiritFireRetreatCenter.com. Did you know what you learned in school was wrong and there is actually a fourth phase of water beyond liquid, vapor, and ice? I know, I know. I too was shocked when I learned this. What makes this new discovery so exciting? In scientific terms, this cutting-edge research explains the energetic potency of water. In practical terms, this missing link of water is now breaking open the floodgates for us to have a more complete understanding of our health, our weather, and the physics of our world. Join researcher, award-winning presenter, and author Professor Gerald Pollack of the University of Washington as he shares new scientific insights about how this fourth phase of water, the sun's energy, and geomagnetism affect our planet and how this affects you at East West Bookshop in Seattle on Saturday, August 5th at 7 p.m. For more information or to register, go to eastwestbookshop.com or call 206-523-3726. Welcome back to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. I'm Eve, the MBA Psychic from Elite Tarot. If you'd like to learn more about me, book an intuitive coaching session over phone or Skype worldwide, or inquire about having readings at an event nationwide, please go to my website at EliteTarot.com. That's E-L-I-T-E-T-A-R-O-T.com or MainstreamMetaphysicsRadio.com. So right before the break, I was talking all about what did we do when we're experiencing energy that we don't know what it is, but we're wanting to jump at it as negative, which can sometimes lead then to creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the thing to remember is that there are things that you can do if you're trying to establish a language, we're trying to figure out what this is. Remember that you are not the powerless receptacle of this energy, you're half of the equation. If it is determined that this is not negative, which is the majority of the time, not always, but the majority of the time, then bless it, welcome it, make notes, keep a dream journal. If this energy is coming forth during the nighttime, consider writing down on a sheet of paper a request such as, tell me what you got to say in a way I understand. If you feel as if your Uncle Bob is trying to get a message to you, write him a letter and establish a system of communication, which might take some trial and error. Light a candle, put the candle by the window, talk to that energy, do some unconscious writing where you write with your non-dominant hand. Try different things. However, recognize that the message or information will still not happen in the direct fashion that you recognize. The more you can avoid the urge to jump to the conclusion that this is negative, the easier it's going to be to be able to find a path forward with ease. Similar to if you go to the doctor when you've got a sore throat. Is it possible you've got strep throat? It's possible, but it could also be a cold. The solution is very different, yet you don't want to rush to take antibiotics if you just have a cold as it can be detrimental. However, the feelings, the feelings in both are distressing. Now, do I fully understand the mechanisms of all of this? Uh Uh-uh. All I can go on is from anecdotal evidence. But from my own experience and my experience with working with clients around the world, this is not something that is unusual or unique. And it can be something uncomfortable, scary, and sometimes even a little debilitating. Remember again, you are not defenseless as you have tools in your cosmic tool chest available to you in dealing with this particular metaphysical situation. I welcome spirit energy that is there to provide guidance, clarity, and insight for me and for you. I reject, however, anything else. 
So why don't we talk a little bit about tools, you know, some of those tools that are in your power in terms of overcoming fear to manifest something in your life that you've tried to do in the past only for it not to go the way planned. You know, I talked about this at the beginning of the year, but now that we're in the summer season, let's revisit it just for a little bit. Whether you're wanting this summer to lose weight, bring healthy love into your life, or get on back on that career path as our caller was earlier in the show, there are common themes and tools which you can apply to all of these. As I like to provide tools that you can use with your own power and strength, I broke down the process into three steps. Some of these steps may seem obvious or even counterintuitive. However, these are the three places in the process that I see time and time again that sabotage results. Now, on January 1st, my gym was packed. Suddenly, there were twice as many people in the building. The locker room was crowded, and I had to get to the group classes super early to reserve a spot. So many people joined the gym for a January 1st start of a new life, something that they had wanted thought about, embraced as a new chapter of their journey. These new people were smart, motivated. They just signed up for a ton of classes and bought the gym membership. They said, this is the year 2017. I'm going to be healthy. This is the year I'm going to go past where I've tried before. Sadly, February 1st, only half of the new people were there. And by now, most of them are gone. It's not that they were doing anything wrong. It was just that their brain sabotaged their efforts. So thinking of whatever it is that you want to put in place this summer, feel free to incorporate these steps into the process. We'll get to as many as we can. So the first step is to acknowledge that this is going to be difficult. You're probably saying, yeah, I know it's going to be tough. And while that is true, at the time when you decide to open a new chapter, you are most often doing so in response to either positive or negative motivation. Perhaps you're feeling physically great after a long hike and you declare that you're going to give up sugar and keep feeling, keep the feeling going. On the negative side, perhaps you've ended or had a drama-filled relationship end and you swear that was the last time. While motivation is wonderful, we all need motivation and determination to make changes in our life, that motivation and adrenaline, li- adrenaline rush has a life cycle. And the process to make change is often longer than the life cycle of mo- the motivation. A plane, going back to my turbulence an- analogy, a plane always carries more fuel than it needs to get to the destination just in case there are any detours or hiccups. Yet we often don't plan ahead of time for the motivation and adrenaline to run out before we've accomplished the goal. In addition, often motivation is done in comparison to other people. If Barbara was able to lose 100 pounds, then while it might not be easy, I can lose 20 pounds. While this sentence sounds accurate, it's based on completely false pretenses. Your journey is completely unique and will look like that of no one else on this planet. And as such, your challenges are also truly unique and will look like that of no one else on this planet. Perhaps Barbara was able to lose 100 pounds fairly easy, but struggles with finding a career where that part is no problem for you, yet losing 20 pounds has been elusive to date. If you're not fully prepared for the challenge, it may lead to self-sabotaging effect where you might say, I just didn't think it was going to be this hard. Yes, it will be this hard. Plan to have more fuel than you need in order to get to your destination. The second tool also seems counterintuitive and commonsensical, yet it's where I see people halted, self-sabotaging their progress. The second step is to engage the analytical brain to pick a program. Whatever your goal is of your new chapter, now the summer is, is, we're in the midst of the summer, intellectually, there's a keen understanding that this is something healthy and joyful you want to be part of. So we want to get that analytical brain engaged in the process before you start. Let's use the earlier example 
of getting physically healthy. If you go into a bookstore, you will see rows upon rows of books with different plans, diets, and systems in place. Is there one book that works best for everyone? Of course not. We are all different with all different body types and metabolisms. You, as the ultimate consumer and pilot of your own vessel, or monster truck, ultimately need to find the system that works best for you. And fortunately, there's a lot to choose from. Do your research. Ask questions now before you engage in the process. What is the approach that this one system, whatever it is, takes? Is this the best system for me and my unique background, needs, body? What is the time frame approximately like? What are the obstacles that I may face by taking this system over another? Who is this person or what is this company or organization that I'm going to place my trust into to help me navigate this transition? Anyone who is not willing to share this information ahead of time is a red flag. There is no guarantee in life. Much is the pity. However, this stage in the process is all about using your brain to reduce risk as much as possible and plan the best system for you going forward. Now, in addition to researching the system you want to use, this step also applies to ensuring you're surrounding yourself with people who can best support the transition, whatever transition it is that you're making. Life is too short to have toxic people or situations in your life. And while you're going to be challenged, and when you're going to be challenged rather, in making a resolution stick, all the more reason to ensure that you have great, if a great and supportive team in place. If your resolution is to go from couch to marathon, it's helpful to have a physical coach to help you navigate the physical transformation. And as such, if your resolution is to go from releasing trauma to living your most authentic life, it's helpful to have an emotional coach in the form of a counselor or therapist, 12-step or support group to help navigate the emotional transformation. Now, going back to the airplane analogy, the airplane doesn't fuel up mid-flight. And while that's possible, it's a whole lot easier to do it back at the airport. If you were told you were going on a four-day camping trip, you might write out each day, all the different food items you would need, making sure you had extras just in case a bear ate one of your suitcases. Take this time to do all your preparation, knowing that ultimately you do not know what your specific journey will look like as you begin your new chapter. So try to account ahead of time for all that you may need and more. So we're going to take our last break. When we come back, we'll be talking some more about energy effectively to manifest joy. You're listening to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. We'll be right back. TheAngelLady.net 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 1-800-323-1790 Sue Storm TheAngelLady.net Powerful insight and practical tools to support you on your spiritual journey. Access your higher self and tune in every second and fourth Thursday at 12 p.m. Pacific to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin, walking the path of freedom. Andrew is a highly attuned intuitive oracle, energy worker, spiritual teacher, and international radio host. For more about Andrew and his services, visit thelightedones.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. 
We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Have you ever said to a friend, I am trying to be less stressed. I am hoping to meet someone special. Or how about I am working on getting a job I love? Hi, I'm Eve from Elite Tarot, host of the weekly show, Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. Words like hoping, wanting, and trying may seem innocent. However, they carry with them emotional weight that actually blocks energy. Next time you start to say these words, say instead, I am becoming less stressed. I am looking forward to meeting someone special. I am pursuing a job I love. While your brain may resist, note how your body physically feels as possibility of success suddenly appears. As an intuitive coach and professional tarot card reader, I work with clients worldwide on using energy effectively to embrace joy. If you'd like to schedule a session, please visit my website at EliteTarot.com. That's E-L-I-T-E-T-A-R-O-T.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. I'm Eve, the MBA Psychic from Elite Tarot, doing readings today, doing a three-card reading with the first card representing the current situation, second card representing something challenging and blocking you, third card representing advice. Let's get right to our next call. Stacy. Stacy, welcome to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. Stacy. Oh, hi. Thank you. Hi. Hi, thank you so much for taking my call. Oh, it's uh, um, pleasure. Is there anything you yeah, have a question, question about? Yeah, it's pretty much like the other gal um, that called in wanted to know when uh, things will open up with um, getting even a stepping stone or work, you know, job, even if yeah. it's just a platform, you know, just something that's going to lead me to something. Um I to- you know, I've been I- looking for work and it's been, you know. <laughs> yeah, I totally hear you. And and that can be such a frustrating thing. And I know there's definitely a desire to know when is this going to turn around in terms of from my perspective and, and my specialty. I'm kind of pointing up to the sky saying that the when is above my pay grade. But what I can do is look at what is in your power to use your energy effectively to help move this along faster. And so while you were talking, I pulled three cards. The first card is the Four of Swords. Now, the Four of Swords, and this is you right now, the cur- represents the current situation. You are doing all the right things. Please take this as validation that you are putting out your intention. You're being very clear with the universe. This is what I want, all of those things. That being said, with the Four of Swords, the the energy associated with that is almost like pulling and pushing a door at the same time. Well, it's good to push a door. Well, it's good to pull a door. If you pull and push at the same time, it stalls energy. And so in this card, you're kind of arms in prayer they're saying you know in terms of up in the sky saying please where where is this job but at the same time in this card you see three swords almost as if it's plunging into into the person meaning that while you're putting out all this positive energy to ask for what you want which is great you're also placing a lot of energy into what if what if what if, you know, and all the things that have not been proven true. And it's very challenging to not choose to place energy into that. So it's the uh, best that you can do is in term, terms of separating out what the what is in your power and what is not in your power. But something challenging and blocking you is actually something really positive. So again, I please want you to have that validation that you're taking the right steps forward. It's just making sure that you're staying as present as possible and not letting the brain 
place energy into the possible negative situations, just because while it is understandable, it is just not an effective use of energy. We all do it, but it's just not the best use of energy. It's like lifting something with your arms rather than your knees. The card challenging or blocking you is the Ace of Pentacles. Now, Aces are all about beginnings and Pentacles are all about career. And so this is saying, again, this is a positive challenge, but it's still in the challenge position. It is saying that an opportunity is now or very soon making its presence known to you. Now, the challenge is, is that it's not something that comes internally. So it's not that suddenly you wake up and say, oh, I know I need to, to check out this direction. It's more seeing what is being offered from the universe in the sense somebody may be saying to you, hey, Stacy, have you ever thought about contacting so-and-so? Or maybe seeing a sign that you hadn't seen before and just pursuing that. The, what will help you in order to not just see, but to embrace that potential career opportunity is to take a sheet of paper and write down, hand write down a bullet point list of the qualities that you need without specifics. So you need uh, to be able to support yourself. You need friendly people. You need to be respected. Whatever your list is, it's important that there are no specifics because when you have specifics, it ties the hands of the universe from being able to exceed your expectations. And then it makes it that much harder to see open doors that perhaps are just not in your brain or not how you envisioned a job going. The more you can give the universe in writing your wish list, your needs, again, without any specifics, just your needs of the core qualities, the more it's able to, the universe is able to present those opportunities. After that, then just look for the open doors but honor the red flags. Your red flags, you know, because that is going to be what you have written down on your list. And so then you'll be able to see, oh, okay, well, I didn't think I would work with this company, but I don't see any red flags. Because please take this as validation again. You're headed in the right direction. It's just a few little tweaks of the actions just to make sure you're using your energy effectively can have that world of difference. The advice card is very similar to the first card and it's the nine of swords, which is really about the fact that if there's an elephant in the room and a gerbil in the room, nobody's gonna pay attention to the poor gerbil. Meaning it's so easy to let the brain kind of go free reign about all the catastrophes. What if this doesn't happen? What if I don't get a job? What if all those things? And yet when doing that, it's taking away from what is in your power. So one thing you may want to consider doing, and this takes place over a two-day process, and you can, we're kind of short on time, so I'm going to go through it pretty quickly, but you can definitely listen to the archive to, to get it more slowly. Um, but basically, on one day, think about the time that you're worrying about things the most. For me, it's two in the morning, and I've got a headache, and I decide at that point to Google, what does a headache mean? <laughs> And so suddenly my brain is freaking out. At that time, take a sheet of paper, write down every single one of your worries and fears. The next day at your sanest time, for me, that's 10 in the morning, take your sheet of paper out and a Sharpie and cross off everything that has not been proven true. For everything left, write one or two things that you are doing with your strength to, to deal with those worries. Again, doing everything right. It's just a few tweaks about using your energy can help move this along faster. I hope that's been helpful. Unfortunately, we're coming up on the end of the show, but please let us know how everything goes. It was a pleasure to talk with you today, Stacy, and we'll be thinking of you. Oh, thank you. That was very enlightening. I like that. Oh, I'm so glad you're doing it. You are doing it. So thanks so much for calling. 
And I want to thank everyone for tuning in to our energy show today on Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. We didn't get to the third thing, but we'll get to that next week. Thank you, Benny, for running the show, and thank you to all of you for tuning in. This is such a blessing for me to be able to do this show each week, and I look forward to next week's show. Please join me every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, with peace and love and gratitude. See you back here next time. You've been listening to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio with your host, Eve. Join us Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com to harness the power of the universe for optimal success and happiness as Eve continues to take metaphysics mainstream. Until then, learn more about Eve and Elite Tarot at EliteTarot.com. That's EliteTarot.com. See you next week. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.